Hey everyone, we're looking at conditional statements in Python. The first thing we need to take a look at though is what are Booleans? And Booleans are the trues and the falses, the zeros and the ones. True has a value of one and false has a value of zero. This is intrinsic to programming languages across the globe. Let's take a look, let's do print true. What's gonna happen? We'll get just true out. Right, but this is intrinsically different than if we did the character true. Right, even see how PyCharm changed here? It holds characters as green and it holds the Boolean value of true as orange, noting that there's a difference. It doesn't look like a difference from the output, but let's do print true plus false. What happens here? We run this, we get a value of one. Why is that? In this case, Python's looking at this and going, okay, we're adding two Boolean values. True is one, false is zero, and thus one plus zero is one. Similarly, if we made an array, let's say, let's just call it array one, and added values in here, not values, but Boolean values, to be more specific, we've got two trues and two falses. If I did a sum and printed the sum of array one, what would be the output? You're gonna get two. And this is just this one is left over from the previous statement here. Yeah, and if we change this to true, now we've got three trues in there. If we sum array one, which has three trues and print that out, we get three now. Very useful to know. Okay, because when we do conditional statements, now we're looking at what evaluates to true and what evaluates to false in our conditional statements. Let's look at some other ways to evaluate conditional statements. And we can say print 10 greater than five. Well, we know that's, that's obviously true. And if we print that out, let me comment out the other section here. If we print that out, we'll get true, which makes sense. We've got a bunch of conditional operators, and I'll go over those in a moment. But we can also do compound conditionals. Okay, compound conditionals are where you now have two conditions, and you can do even more. And you separate them with either ands or ors. Okay, and it evaluates both of them and then makes a decision. Here we've got 10 greater than 5. We know that part will evaluate to true. So we've got the first part is true. And looks at the second part, one is greater than five, that's also true. So we basically got true and true. With the and, both of those conditions have to be true and the entire thing will evaluate to true. If we print this out, we'll get true. And it's still printing out my previous one too. There we go. Here, let's evaluate that again. This evaluates Oop, hold on here, what happened? Here we go. This evaluates to true because both of the thing on the left and the thing on the right are true. If I change this on the left to negative 10, well now we've got true and false, that evaluates to false because they're both not true. The other option we can take a look at is or. Let's do print five greater than or equal to five, one of our other conditional operators, or one greater than five. What's going on here? The first part, five greater than or equal to five. That's true, because it's equal to. Second part, one greater than five, that's false. With the or item though, or only needs one, either the right or the left, to be true. If at least one of those is true, that statement evaluates to true. So in this case, this will print out true. And then if they're both false, so if I said five is greater than five, or one is greater than five, this is a false or false, in which case it evaluates to false. It's a bit weird at first, Give yourself some examples, just play around with this type of stuff. Of course, as things get more complex, you'll start to use actual values in here and you'll set 
x equal to 10, y equal to 10. And you'll begin replacing just straight values with actual variables in these conditional statements. So in this one here, x is 10, y is 10. So here, this is still going to be false. And the right side will also be will also be false still. So here we still evaluate just to false. The other conditional operators that you should know, equal to, not equal to, greater than, greater than or equal to, less than, less than or equal to. I really like the exclamation point equal one. That's a unique one. So here if we go, we can do that. So is x not equal to y? Well, they're equal, so that's false. This will still be false here if we run that. And then if we were to increase this to 11, or just 1 here, x is 1. 1 is not equal to 10, so that's true. Here we go to true. Other side's still false because one of them's true. That statement evaluates to true. Then from here, you can take these complex conditional operations and put them in your while loops and your for loops. Example, let's say you wanted to do here x is 10 again. We're just going to rewrite just to keep things clean and fresh. We'll do while x is greater than 5 and y is less than 20. I'm actually going to put those in parentheses just for my own visual clarification of what's happening here. I think that should be okay syntax wise. So to start, right, is x greater than 5? That's true. So we've got true. And is y less than 20? Yes, that's also true. Because it's an and statement, that whole thing will value to true, and the while loop will run. Every time that happens, I eventually want this while loop to end, so I'm going to reduce x, so x equals x minus 2, and then I'll run that loop. So we know logically this should happen, let's see, it'll be 10, x will be 10 to start, it'll reduce 2 to 8, reduce 2 to 6, which will only run just a couple times here. Now if we run that, we don't have anything outputting, let me just print that it ran. Ran, ran, ran. Yep, prints three times. And then ultimately that x becomes four. Right after it's so x equals six, it runs and then it reduces it by two again. So then x is only four. This part becomes false. A false with an and makes the whole thing false. The while loop stops and your code can continue from there. Hope this helped with some basic booleans, zeros and ones, as well as seeing how these complex conditional statements work. Hope you enjoyed the video. Good luck out there. Let me know if you have questions in the comments. Thank you so much. Please like and subscribe. Cheers.